Today, I wanted to tell Brady about a prize that I'd won, named after an Australian chemist, Ron Nyholm. And he told me that it was Australia Day today, so it seems particularly appropriate. And Ron Nyholm is a chemist whose name is not terribly well known outside inorganic chemistry, but who is one of the great father figures of inorganic chemistry and also of chemical education. And the Royal Society of Chemistry has a medal in his name. One year it's awarded for inorganic chemistry and the next year for education and so on, backwards and forwards. And I won it for education. So here's the medal. And you can see there's a picture of Ron Nyholm and there's quite an impressive crest on the back of the Royal Society of Chemistry. And it's made of silver and it has my name on it. What's really exciting for me is that I was awarded this for my contribution to chemical education largely via YouTube. So first of all, I should thank everybody who's watching because you contributed to my winning a prize and I'm very grateful to you. But what is amazing about Ron Nyholm, who died in 1971, is that most of the things that I and my colleagues teach as inorganic chemistry here in Nottingham and across the world were pioneered by him. Not that they, he discovered them, but that he brought them together as being important points of inorganic chemistry. And in a few days time, I have to give a lecture about Ron Nyholm and education. And I'm going to talk a bit about how he worked in arsenic chemistry. Quite a nasty area of chemistry. I've never worked in arsenic. And he also worked very heavily on the structure of molecules, an area where many of you who are watching, if you've been studying chemistry at school, will have come across his work, was in predicting the shapes of molecules of the main group elements. He produced a theory together with a Canadian chemist called Ron Gillespie to explain these shapes. When I was a student, it was called the Nyholm Gillespie theory. Now it has a rather less romantic name of VSEPR, valent shell electron pair repulsion. But the idea is that you count up the number of electrons or pairs of electrons in a molecule, and the number of pairs of electrons determines the shape of the molecule. If they're four, it can be tetrahedral, like this one. And, or if there's six of them, you have an octahedral molecule. This is my commando molecule. And if they're five, you can get different shapes, but usually you get this one, which is called the trigonal bipyramid. And he also explained that if you have four bo atoms bonded round and two pairs of electrons, you get a square shaped molecule with the electrons above and below. But the really exciting thing that Nyholm explained was actually the bond angles of molecules. And he explained that in a molecule like this one, this is sulfur tetrafluoride, four fluorines and a sulfur in the middle, yellow for sulfur. He explained that in this molecule, why these two here were pushed backwards by the presence of a pair of electrons here. It's quite funny, because of him, this molecule, SF4, which is really quite an obscure molecule, has become really famous in structural inorganic chemistry. Ron Nyholm, if you read his obituary, was meant to be a fantastically warm character. Whenever he went into a room, he, the conversation all lit up, and he was really a great enthusiast. And one of the big disappointments of my life was that I never met him. And I very nearly met him. I was at a party in Cambridge in 1971, in December, when he was due to arrive. But en route to Cambridge, he had a terrible car crash. He drove into the back of another vehicle and was killed. And it was a real tragedy because he was only 54. Probably much of his best work was ahead of him but he died. And 
I think it is a tribute to the excellence of his work that more than 40 years after this car crash, he's still remembered every year with one of the most prestigious medals of the Royal Society of Chemistry. I think it's really good for us today on Australia Day to think about the memory of Ron Nyholm, who really made inorganic chemistry the exciting subject that it is today.